Ladies and gentlemen, what the world's been waiting for, what the world needs now, the one, the only, amazing, original, Johnny Blaze. Often imitated, but never duplicated. There's Johnny. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you all to the amazing original Johnny Blaze show. It's always great to be here as I blaze right in with my karate kick. Let's have a blazing hot fun time. Hello, folks. Sorry, I'm out of breath. The only exercise I've been getting lately is running out of money. <laughs> a man was relaxing on the couch when he heard a noise at his front door. He jumped up and opened the door and saw no one standing there. He then noticed a small snail crawling slowly into his house. He picked up the snail and threw it as far away as he could, then lay down and took a nap. About a month later, the man heard another strange noise at his door. He jumped up and opened the door and noticed an, another, the same small snail crawling towards him. The man picked up the snail and the snail yelled at the man. So what was all that about last month? A man was walking down the street when he noticed a kid running a, lem a lemonade stand. There was a hand painted sign that read all you can have for a dime. The man gave the boy 10 cents and enjoyed a glass of lemonade. That was delicious, said the man. I'll have another glass. That will cost you 10 cents, said the boy. What? I thought your son read all you can have for a dime. Yes, replied the boy. That's all you can have for a dime. <laughs> we have a blazing hot fun show with a special guest. She's a multi-talented singer, songwriter, guitarist, and an all-around entertainer. So please give a big warm welcome and say hello to the one and only Patty Spadero. Patty Spadero, welcome to the amazing original Johnny Blaze show. Hi, hello. Yeah, you're looking nice. You're smiling. You got glasses. You're looking really, looking beautiful there. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> you're certainly welcome, Patty. Uh, give me a rundown. Tell me about the the Patty Spadero story. How did you get started in entertainment, and where are you from? I'm from Pennsylvania. I grew up in the suburbs of Philly. Okay. Um, and started playing guitar around 11 years old. Father was a musician, music teacher, and um, older brothers always playing their Led Zeppelin and their uh, Pink Floyd <laughs> in from their bedroom. So I got exposed to that kind of music uh, from an early age. And uh, started taking some guitar lessons, played all through high school and college. I ended up going out to um, uh, Musicians Institute in California and learning a lot of great things from some amazing players out there. And uh, that's when it really took off. And I just stayed in California for about 10 years playing full time touring with bands, writing songs, uh, recording, releasing some CDs, and uh, touring up and down the West Coast. And yeah, I did that for a while. Uh, eventually, I was ready to kind of maybe step back a little bit, settle down, buy a house, have kids, do all that. So I came back to Pennsylvania um, in the Pittsburgh area which is where I still am now and kept on playing, but also had two daughters and along the way started taking yoga classes, did a little teaching of yoga and uh, still writing and playing and, you know, enjoying music as much as I can. Sounds like you're a oh, very experienced. It sounds like, Oh yeah, you're, you came back full circle. You've done quite a bit. So you, you took lessons, you took guitar lessons, you take voice lessons also, or did you teach it yourself? Uh, yeah, I did take some voice lessons. I still do take voice lessons now and then. Um, I have a teacher out here in Pittsburgh, Beth Clausen, who's uh, pretty amazing, very helpful, teaching me how to breathe and sing the correct way and all that, make sure I'm on pitch. So, um, yeah, she's been very helpful over the years as well. That's fantastic. It really is. And you have, now you have you uh, you have your own band. 
Uh, yeah, the Patty Spadaro Band. Okay. Um, we've played on and off a bunch for a bunch of years. I did a CD called Bringing Me Back. In fact, I have it right here. Bringing Me Back. <laughs> um, back in 2010. And we just released a new single. Just um, June 8th was our release date um, called Glass Shatters. So I play with, yeah, my own band. And then I also do other things with other bands and other singers. And I like to collaborate with people and see what we can create together. How many people are in the band? And, and, and tell me about them. What instruments do they play? And how did you meet? Oh, the Patty Spadero Band. Um, well, I sing and play guitar. Uh, my drummer, Eric Kurtz Rock, we've been playing together for a long time. Um, he actually has his own studio, and that's where we recorded the new single, Glass Shatters, at his studio. Uh, he lived in San Francisco for a while. He was playing with all kinds of people out there. And um, and I met him here in Pittsburgh at a friend's gig, and he introduced us, and then we started playing together and still play together. Um, and then I've been through some personnel changes, but on this new single, I have a couple of, uh, actually four other women vocalists joined together with me. So there's a lot of women voices in uh, on this latest song. And it's pretty cool. Lots of harmony and um, complimenting each other. Um, Cheryl Ann Hawk. Uh, she and I have been friends for a long time and we've played together in different situations. And then uh, Jill Simmons play, uh, sings some harmonies. She um, is in a, a band called Brown Eyed Women. They're a Grateful Dead all-female touring band. Um, Anne Celedonia also plays keyboards on the, on the new single and she sings and she's a uh, She's got her own band and she also plays with the common heart. So everybody's like really busy <laughs> with a variety of projects. How did you create um, the glass shatters now? That sounds very interesting. And also Cheryl Ann Hawk. I just got through them. That was my last show. Your, uh, your friend. That you oh yeah. 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 She just uh, released a brand new song as well. So it was really fun to have her on board with this particular song. And uh, we have a show coming up together. I guess in September. So I'm looking forward to that. Great. So how did you come? How did you come up with that concept, Gladys Shatters? Tell me about it. What is it about? And how did you create that uh, that song? Um, originally, it's kind of about like breaking the glass ceiling. Um, you know, women's empowerment. I guess I came up through with it um, with our first female vice president. First, the election, and then the swearing in of our first female VP. Oh, really? Exciting, you know, for women. Um, you know, if you can imagine never having <laughs> a president or vice president the same gender as you, uh, it's pretty exciting to finally have that glass ceiling kind of shattered. So that gave me that idea. So just my own life, you know, being in a, um, a lead guitar player who, um, you know, that field is pretty dominated by men. So uh, it's kind of a theme I can relate to a little bit. Um, and uh, yeah, that's where the song idea it's great. From. I'm sure many, many women can relate to that, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. yeah get started somewhere, right? Somebody's, yep. somebody's got to break the glass and, break and shatter it and get it started, right? And that's what you're doing. Right, right. And the song, you know, it, it acknowledges that historic moment, but also says we got to keep Keep working together. Keep continuing on. Keep working to break other ceilings out there. I got you. And who would you want to collaborate if you were to collaborate with someone? Who would you want to collaborate with? Um, gee, that's a good question. Um, you know, I I love Sarah Bareilles. I love her her vocals. It would be really fun to do something with her. Um, I'm a big Grateful Dead fan. I'd love to maybe jam around on the guitar with Bob Weir. That would be a lot of fun. Great. So who is, who do you look up to? Is there any one person or many people that you inspire you to be a, a singer and songwriter? Um, let me see. Uh, Bonnie Raitt is great. I really, um, 
love what she's done over her the span of her career um, as a female guitar player and as a vocalist and songwriter and ability. She's just played with so many people over her career and also has her own strong solo project. Um, so yeah, she's been an inspiration over the years. Are there any others or is that, the, that's the main one? Um, well, I'm sure there's all kinds of people. <laughs> um, like I said, big Grateful Dead fan. I love Fish, Trey Anastasio. Uh, Tedeschi Trucks Band is a big one. Susan Tedeschi. Um, singing and writing and her husband, Derek Trucks, is just an amazing guitar player. I've always enjoyed his playing. So both of them <laughs> are inspirations to me. Gotcha. Uh, what are your favorite kinds of uh, music? What, how would you describe your music? Is it rock? Is it pop? Is it country? Is it classical? Is it jazz? Uh, is it folk? Um, the gospel? I would call it rock, um, bluesy, little bluesy feel, maybe rootsy kind of feel. Definitely rock and roll. Um, I. I kind of have some jam band tendencies when we play live. We like to improvise and jam out on the spot a little bit, explore and create on the in the moment is a lot of fun. So bluesy, yeah, you jammy prefer, rock, I guess. Jammy rock? That's interesting. Do you prefer cover songs or original or bold or, you know? Um, well, I love to write and create, create something new. Um, so original music is... Uh, yeah, it's one of my favorite things to do. But, you know, I also love to play some of my favorite songs by some of my favorite artists. Um, so I like to blend the two together. <laughs> so you like both, it sounds like. But you really love to create. That's what you're telling me. Okay, I'm great. sorry, what was that? I said you like both, but you like to create. I don't know, what is your stronger or you're more of a favorite of a creating than doing cover or... About yeah, I like to create. I like to write original songs. I love to collaborate with people, create something new. So, yeah, I would say original music is uh, more where my heart lies. I see. Well, that's, that takes a special talent. How do you go about creating uh, music and uh, writing a popular hit song? Is it words or music first or, you know, vice versa? Yeah. Um different comes different ways at different times oftentimes i'll just you know just start writing ideas down in a notebook um see what comes through and then i'll go back and rewrite and change things around and maybe two weeks later i'll have another idea and, and fit it in with that first idea um oftentimes i'll get um a musical idea in my head or when i'm playing around with my guitar and I'll just grab my phone and I'll like record it on my notes or my um, voice memo app so that I can go back and listen to it anytime. And then, um, you know, sometimes I'll get a riff or chord idea and apply that later to words that I come up with or vice versa. I'll come up with the words first and, um, and start to play around with some chords and riffs and melodies. So it always seems to be different. So sometimes it's the words first, sometimes music first. And it sounds like it's just ideas that pop into your head and based upon your personal experiences, pretty much. Yeah, I'm kind of introspective songwriter, I guess. I like to, you know, write about thoughts that come up or um, I don't know, yeah. Sometimes I like to kind of write in a way that um, might be inspiring to someone. Somebody's going through a hard time or something. Maybe my song will give them a little pick me up, a little lift. Um, that makes me feel good, knowing that maybe right. I can make someone else feel good through my music. So you like to tell a story probably through your through your songwriting and your performing. Is that right? Yeah, some of it's story, more of a story oriented, and other is more like, um, uh, I don't know, more, how do I s explain it? Just like experiential, I guess, like this is mm. some ideas I have, or this is something we could do or try, or yeah, sometimes it's just about, like I have a song called Tonight, just about being with a special person in a special moment on the beach, just 
like enjoying that moment. <laughs> Other awesome. ones are more tell a story. So. Do you prefer the uh, like a slow ballads or you prefer a faster type of songs, type of songs, or is it the same or is there anything that stands at the better ones? Mm -hmm. What's your favorite? So it's a little bit of a groove. You can get up and dance to it, move yeah. to it. Um, I, I like the slower songs as well, but I think my favorite is probably songs that have a little bit more of a groove that you can, you know, get you up and move in a little bit. That sounds good. So you have a lot of rhythm and you like to get up and you know, let people get up and dance and have a yeah. great time. Like, yeah. talk, about your, talk to me about your performances now. Um, on your performances, um, do you prefer large crowds or small crowds? And uh, describe uh, your favorite type of uh, performance. What's, what's your all-time favorite me uh, memory, you have, memory you have of a great show? And also tell me the opposite. Uh, what's a show that you, you would say... Uh, you want to forget about it? You may or you anything embarrassing that ever happened on any shows. Um. Well, I like both big venues and small venues. I like when the crowd kind of fills the venue. So, if you had fifty people in a fifty-person venue, that's great. If you have fifty people in a five-hundred-person venue, then you feel like, wow, this is not going so well. Not enough people here. Um, but I, it's fun to play to a smaller, more intimate crowd. And it's also great to have, a, you know, on a, on a big stage to um, a great big crowd. We, it is a lot of fun, too. Um, let me think. Some favorite moments. Uh, Rex Theater in, here in Pittsburgh. Played there a few times um, when the crowd gets up and dancing. It just really feels great. Uh, when the band can improvise a little bit, just feel like kind of free in the zone kind of thing. That's a lot of fun. Um, I've opened for some some really cool artists. Uh, Eddie Van Halen, we opened for him out in, Pen uh, out in um, L.A. That was a blast. That was a lot of fun. He was amazing. <laughs> and we got to hang out with him backstage, which was a lot of fun, too. Uh, Little Feet got to open for them. Um, they had a great crowd there. People up and dancing, having a good time. That was a lot of fun, too. So lots of good memories. Um, I, there was one not-so-good memory. Uh, I played Hartwood Acres in Pittsburgh, which is a great venue. And um, generally a lot of fun to play there. I played there a few times. But the one time, it was just really, really hot. And the sun was beating down on me and I couldn't see my guitar tuner because the sun, like it lights up, but the sun was so bright, you couldn't see the lights. So like my guitar was a little bit out of tune and I, you know, with the heat, it was hard to keep it in tune. So that was a little bit of a struggle, but um, otherwise we still had fun. Okay. So there was ever a time where you tried your best to make it a show work. And no matter what you did, you meant well, you tried your best, you were very trying, but for some reason, things did not work. Any, is that any other one besides the one you just described? Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> trying to think. Um, nothing's coming to mind at the moment. Well, and also, what's the most embarrassing, was there the most embarrassing <laughs> time that you've had performing? Huh. Well, we have, we've definitely had a couple that, you know, just for whatever reason, we didn't have many people show up. Um, and you kind of, you still try to give it your all, even if there's only, you know, 10 people in the audience, but you kind of know, like, we're probably going to be losing money on this show and what could we have done better to promote it? Um, sometimes it's hard to stay <laughs> excited <laughs> when, you know, it's just not, that great of a show or occasionally there's a person in the audience who's uh you know maybe had a little too much to drink or something uh -huh. and making a scene a couple times something like that's happened but um i've broken strings a couple times on stage <laughs> where you're in the middle of a song and boom you hit the hit the chord and boom, the string mm -hmm. pops and then you're like ah. you know, forget any song i have to try to finish this song with only 
Oh. With a broken string. So <laughs> you ever forget any words in the middle of a performance or forget chords? And if so, how did you handle it? Have I ever forgotten words, words or chords? In the of a yeah. Or you yeah. forgot some of your chords, your guitar chords. Uh huh. Um, that's happened occasionally. Um, you know, usually if that happens, I hope that the band <laughs> remembers what they're doing so that if I kind of like turn down my volume or, um, you know, if I hit a wrong chord, maybe people won't notice if they everybody else hit the right chord. Uh, so, yeah, that's definitely happened. I think that's happened to all of us musicians here. It's now called Murphy's Law. That's right. Murphy's Law, right? If anything can go wrong, <laughs> can and it will. Yeah. Or maybe Patty's Law. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. hopefully not. <laughs> hopefully <laughs> All right. Hopefully everything goes right, but you never know. You never know. Do you do any uh, meet and greets or sign any autographs in your shows? Um. Yeah. Sure. Uh, we try to have like a little merch table where we might have some uh, some CDs or stickers or T-shirts or something, and I like to hang out there after a show, and people can come up and say hello and meet me and say hi, and you know. So you Especially like to meet people. You're a people person. You like to meet people. You like to please the crowd, right? Sure. Yeah. Okay, well, that's that's great. What about audience participation now? Do you get the audience to participate? If you do, how do you get them to participate? Um. <laughs> well, sometimes I prefer to work with another singer who can kind of get that kind of thing happening especially if i'm playing guitar and singing at the same time it can be hard to you know like you know get everybody off and clapping because i'm playing right. my guitar with my hands well, that makes so sense. sometimes i actually prefer to have another singer working with me and they can kind of work up the crowd that way or also sometimes i'll just go into a guitar solo and kind of you know come up to the front of the stage and see try to get people into it um, yeah, yeah. I invite people to sing along occasionally, you know. Well, that's that's important. That's very important. Body's participation. They're if yeah. they're feeling like they're part of it, they're having a great time. That's the idea. Fine. You want to entertain them, make them forget right. about their woes, right? Let's make them put up, turn their frowns and just turn or turn around their frowns, right? Make them, exactly. smile, make them smile, right? Okay. Exactly. There you go. That makes sense, right? All right. Well, anyway, um, have you? Tell me about your, uh, your any venues that you have, any favorite ones to stand out, where do you go, and what are your favorite ones that you've been to, and also about your traveling experience, Spences, uh, and have you done any tours also in the... Mm -hmm. um, here in Pittsburgh, a couple of my favorite venues, I would say the Thunderbird is a really great place. Um, it's kind of a nice room, pretty big, nice... Uh, Sound system, nice stage, good feel, good people work there, and and yeah, lots of fun shows there. Um, Moon Dogs is a smaller kind of blues centered bar that, I mean, they had people like Susan Tedeschi way, way, way back, um, you know, before they made it big. And they have a lot of touring bands come through, even though they're kind of a smaller bluesy band a bar. And um, yeah, the, the the owner is just a great person, really supports local music, which is awesome. Um, so those are a couple favorite Pittsburgh venues. And then touring, you mentioned. Um, I haven't done that for a while, but yeah, I toured like the Southwest. And up and down the West Coast, when I lived out there, we, you know, we'd do a show in L.A. and then just make our way up all the way up the coast. We'd go to um, San Francisco area, Davis, California. We'd hit Humboldt County, uh, Northern California up there, and then up into uh, Portland, Oregon, and Seattle, Washington. And we'd hit little towns in between. And then make our way back down, maybe go all the way down to San, uh, San Diego and finish up again in L.A. So a lot of that just kind of going up and down the coast. Um, and then did some Southwestern touring, um, New Mexico, Utah, Las Vegas, uh, 
Texas, Austin. Wow. All over. Yeah. Any favorites out of them all? Or you like? <laughs> um, you know, lots of different things. I mean, LA has some some iconic clubs which were really fun. The Whiskey and the Roxy. You know, these clubs that some famous fans got their start. Troubadour. 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 Yes. Um, right. And then just it, traveling was. You know, there's some beautiful places like Humboldt County, California is beautiful. And um, up in Oregon, I remember uh, Crater Lake. We stopped there. <laughs> uh, just beautiful, beautiful countryside. Um, and then Austin, Texas was a lot of fun. You know, definitely a music town. That's great. Now, if you ever have an audience that's very, uh, you, uh, it looks like they're, they're kind of bored. Maybe they're, look like they're maybe falling asleep. They're bored. How do you go about and re-energize the crowd? <laughs> um. <laughs> good question um well i might switch to a more upbeat song you know try to get people maybe engage a little bit maybe talk a little bit get them engaged um you know ask for a request maybe um or say hey you know like what what do you guys like to hear you know what's, what's your favorite song what's your favorite kind of music um see what they say or just, you know, go off into something more upbeat and try to, you know, dance around a little bit, get people more interested and engaged. Well, that makes sense. You want to, you want to get them involved, that's for sure. Right. Yeah, uh, if you tell me about, uh, you ever have any uh, performance anxiety before you get ready to perform? Does that ever come up? And if it does, how do you, how do you handle that? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, I get nervous sometimes. Uh, little butterflies in the stomach. Um, I do a lot of conscious breathing. Um, in fact, I teach a, a college course called Mindfulness in Music, <laughs> where we talk about a lot about that, how you deal with stage fright or, or anxiety. Um, we do a lot of deep breathing, just focusing on the breath, maybe closing my eyes for a moment, feeling the breath come in, feel it filling you up. And then exhale, just letting go, relaxing. Taking almost like hypnosis, almost. You're just relaxing and put yourself. A little, a little bit like meditation, a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, mindfulness, um, just kind of getting centered in the body, feeling your, you know, abdomen, feeling strong down in the navel, feeling your feet against the floor, and just allowing the breath to fill you up and help you relax. Let it go. Just let it go and relax. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> how about rejection now that's in every part of life but especially in entertainment uh how do you deal with it have you had that experience and if so how, how do you how do you handle something like this yeah yeah i think we've all had that experience um well what can you do uh same kind of thing just um be with it a little bit see if well maybe well, there's something i could have done differently could have done better maybe maybe not maybe it's just not a good fit Maybe somewhere down the road, something better is waiting. Um, again, you know, just breathing, being uh, confident in my own abilities. And some things work out, some things don't. You know, just being okay with what is. We definitely have a very positive, nice smile disposition, a very good attitude, <laughs> Patty. Thank you. <laughs> Tell you love what you're doing, that's for sure. Yeah. All your mind, yeah. body, heart, and soul. There you go. Um, well, <laughs> excuse me. Um, what is a typical? What's a typical day as a, a singer and songwriter? Typical day? Yeah. Uh, and kind of depends. Each day is different. I think this summer I've been focusing a little bit more on promoting because I have this new single that I just released. So doing some interviews like this which, um, you know, I wasn't doing in the spring or the winter. And then I was, I was writing and recording more. Um, and then we released it and now I'm doing more of the promotional kind of stuff, but I still try to find some time to continue writing and, uh, work on some songs that, um, I'm currently in the studio starting to record and, um, learning, you know, it's always great to learn some other people's music, 
like how would this singer sing this particular song um, or some, some other songs to put into my repertoire, like, Oh, I could add this new cover song in to give, you know, just something different into the set. So uh, I try to go out for a walk, get a little exercise um, during the school year. Um, I teach, teach at a college. I teach some yoga and meditation and that course I call mindfulness and music. So I'll do that in the mornings and then have my afternoons to focus on music, maybe do a rehearsal in the evening, depending on just what's coming up that week, what's going on. A little bit of everything, huh? Okay. Yeah. You're organized. Nope. That sounds like it. Have you, done, have you worked, done any charities at all? Any I'm sorry, what was that? Have you ever performed any for charities? If oh, yeah. Have, what are some of the charities that you... Sure, I've done a lot of that. Um, I was doing... A, an annual show for a while, probably eight or 10 times. We did uh, Blues Go Pink, which was um, breast cancer awareness and raised funds for uh, mammograms for, um, you know, underinsured women who might just skip the mammogram because they can't afford the copay or whatever. Um, and it's say actually, it, you know, tracking it, we, it saved people's lives because if they had skipped that mammogram, they wouldn't have detected um, early stages of cancer. So yeah, we did the blues go pink, which featured women artists. Um, we'd have a concert with several bands that had at least one woman in the band. And some of the years we put together like a, all women band, you know, drew people in from other bands to create a, a, a set just for that show. Um, this past Thanksgiving, I did a show with Bill Toms and Hard Rain, another a Pittsburgh band that was for um, PAAR, PAR, Pittsburgh Action Against Rape. I think it was another woman's cause. Um, he does that every Thanksgiving. He puts on a big show. So it was Nice to be a part of that this year. I've done some other ones out in LA. I did a free arts for abused children fundraiser. Uh, Little Feet open, or we opened for Little Feet. We played that gig, which was a lot of fun. The El Rey Theater in Los Angeles. So yeah, and I've done other ones as well. That's great. Well, mm -hmm. all very good causes. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of good experience too for you. Very good. Yeah. What about uh, any now all the different television shows and radios uh, and podcasts? Tell me about the different ones and ones that stand out that you that you've been involved with and ones that have the most meaning. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your different experiences. Mm -hmm. um, I guess one that really stands out is um, back in LA. My band, I had a band called the Zookeepers, and we um, KTLA television station out there okay um they had some kind of big contest or something and they named they picked the five top bands in la so we were one of them and we got to pr perform on good day la uh i think they taped it and then like ran it an hour or two later or something so we were there early in the morning <laughs> and get up and play on uh good day la so that was that was like you know, a big network show. So that was pretty fun to be on that. That was probably my favorite one. Good day, LA. Okay, yeah, that's that's quite a show. There you go. Any other ones? Any other ones that stand out? Any did you do any radio shows or do you do any other podcasts besides the one you're Yeah. Doing? Um radio we did um WDVE here in Pittsburgh. I played live on the air on WDVE a couple of times once was with this uh, band we put together with some artists here in Pittsburgh, uh, Janis Joplin tribute. Mm -hmm. So we had a, a few female singers and I was playing guitar on that one. And um, we got to do a couple of those Janis Joplin songs live on the air. And then I played another time at WDVE on the air. WYEP here in Pittsburgh, I played their um, like live concert where they had a live audience there. 
and we played up on the stage, the Patty Spadero band. That was definitely a lot of fun. Yeah, I enjoyed that. Any podcasts that you've uh, done that have stood out? Podcasts. Um, yeah, I've just done a few recently, and I'm kind of blanking out on the names of them. <laughs> okay. One was... If, I forget what the name of it. If you can't speak it, play it, or something like that. Um, that was a lot of fun. We had a nice conversation. I'll have to I'll have to remember the exact name of their show, but um, I'm sure that will come back. And you do music videos also. Uh, how do you go about doing that? And tell me about some of your music videos that you're involved with. Um, yeah, we just did one for Glass Shatters, the new single. Um, Cheryl Ann Hawk and I actually Cheryl Ann who sang harmony on the single and who you said you just interviewed last week for her own song um, she and I and got some other friends together and my daughter's in the video too um, and we wanted to kind of feature women because that song in particular is about you know breaking the glass ceiling for women. So we got some women involved um, and we just went out in Pittsburgh dancing around, walking around through the streets and also in uh, on Point Street Park, big flag there. We danced around in front of the flag a little bit, um, singing the song. And then the, uh, the videographer came into the studio and he took shot some footage too of mm -hmm. us recording in the studio. We put it all together. He actually put it all together and I think he did a nice job with it. David Heath. Um, <clears throat> yeah, friend recommended him. Lofty Views, uh, video production company here in Pittsburgh. And he had a lot of ideas, you know, told us where to stand and what to do. And we just kind of had fun with it, danced around and sang what we love to do. So it was uh, kind of a fun day. That's great. Now you love you love songwriting. How many songs would you say in your career that you have uh, been able to create and produce? Um, How many albums? Also, you probably yeah. Well, I have. I guess I have two full length albums under my own solo career, and then I just released this new single under my solo career, and then I have some albums with some other people. Like I said, the Zookeepers was the kind of band I was in for some years and uh, put put out two CDs with them. It was with a band called the Mistrals for a while. We put out a CD. And then I've recorded with some other people, collaborated. Um, Mitch Bell played on his CD. Um, so... <laughs> Some of those Zookeeper songs and Mr. All songs I co-wrote with the other people in the band. And then on my solo albums, I wrote all the songs myself. Who would you, so, like, to open up, who would you like to open up for? Is anybody in particular you'd like to open up for? Um, who would I like to open up for? Huh. Uh, maybe Tedeschi Trucks. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> He's pretty amazing. Um, I opened for, um, JGB and Melvin Seals. That was fun. But who else? It, you know, like Dead and Company, that would be great. Mo, they're a, uh, jam band, String Cheese Incident. Daniel Donato is a up and coming guitar player. That's really great. Um, yeah, who else? Maybe um, like Natalie Merchant, or Dar Williams, or somebody, singer songwriter, woman. Oh, that's that's great. That is great. <laughs> a lot of possibilities. There's a lot of possibilities, Patty. That there are. <laughs> right. Uh, well, doing quite a few, quite a few things. So you've done besides. If you weren't uh, doing music now, what, you, um, what other jobs did you do before you got into? Uh, entertaining and singing and songwriting. Is there any particular mm -hmm. job, other jobs that you did? Well, way back, I um, actually studied physics in college, Drexel University. So I got my bachelor's 
And I did some co-op jobs during college to kind of help me pay my way through college. And then a year after, I worked in the field of physics and engineering, computer programming. And really, I just kind of wanted to save up money to go to music school because after studying physics all that time, I really kind of got to know that I really just wanted to play music. So, um, yeah, I did work a year after I graduated, saved up as much as I could so that I could go out to L.A. and and, and be a be a musician um and then i nowadays i i teach some yoga and some meditation and uh, some college courses and i also have taught guitar lessons a little um, bit of everything yeah. which ones do you like um, what meditation yoga teaching guitar you like them all equally or is there anything that stands out on those particular um i you know i used to teach guitar lessons more uh before I had my own kids. I had two daughters. Um, I taught guitar lessons a lot. And then I kind of got away from that and was focusing on spending more time with my kids. And then as they grew, I got more into the yoga and meditation. So right now I, I teach yoga and meditation at college and um, I enjoy that, you know, it gets me practicing yoga, gives me a little exercise and it helps me to share like this other part of myself with, you know, the next generation. So I hope to uh, give them something, some wellness and some tools for uh, just being positive and dealing with stress and, and you're feeling versatile. healthy. You're versatile. You're not only a singer and songwriter, you yoga, teaching the guitar, you name it, you do it. Yeah. <laughs> a Patty, a Patty, uh, what is it? Man, a master of uh, of many things, of many uh, talent, many talents there, Patty. Right. What about talent shows now? Um, have you uh, ever entered any talent shows? And if you did, what what were your, what which ones stood out? And also, what do you think about uh, talent shows for aspiring uh, singers and songwriters? People want to make it in show business, like America's Got Talent, X Factor, The Voice. Uh -huh. uh -huh. I think that they could be of help to. Uh, you know, I don't think I've ever been in a talent show i have judged one <laughs> and i have with my kids when they were in school i kind of helped as a parent helper <laughs> for they had like school talent shows so i did that and um i was a judge for um pittsburgh has uh like a blues i forget the name of it but um you know bunch of blues bands compete and then they pick the one that goes off to the national finals or whatever. So I was a judge for that, but I, I haven't, I was never really the kind of person to go out for talent shows. I, I think I prefer to like play with a band rather than like be a solo artist. I see. But um, yeah, if it's, if it's something that people are drawn to, I think it's, it's a great, a great way to get, more exposure to get out there and to be seen. And I imagine you learn a lot from it too, because you can kind of see what other people are doing and maybe get a video of yourself and, and see <laughs> if is it, you know, there's things you want to change. And hey, if you do well, that's great. Go on to the next level. So you're so you're saying that people, if they think that they have I said, show us what you got. If they have it, that they should uh, pursue talent sure. shows like American Idol or America's Got Talent or the you know, X Factor of the Voice, right? Yeah, sure. If that's uh, right. what they're drawn to, then yeah, definitely. You feel it's helpful to them. Now, if you if you go for an audition and you don't get it, you don't get the call back or whatever, you know, you're ignored or you don't make it, it's not the end of the world, right? It just means that <laughs> you didn't, your talent wasn't what they were looking for. Right, yeah. And sometimes people are looking for a very specific look or sound or you know we want female pop singer and you're a male rock and roll singer you know or you know a certain look or style that might just not be you or you might also be like hey i didn't make this one but no i now i know what i need to work on i can right. go work on that and come back next year 
Well, there's an old saying too: if if one door closes, another door can open. That's for sure. Right. Absolutely. You never give up because once you give up, you're finished. Right. That's right. Yeah. Quitters never win, and winners never quit. Right. (laughs) There you go. Um, What about music competitions now and festivals? Have you ever entered any of those? And have you also have you won any awards? Talk to me about that. I mean, those experiences. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I've entered a few like songwriting contests, but never won any of them. Um, Awards. Well, we did get that, you know, top five bands in LA. I don't know if it was an award really. (laughs) I don't know, but um, you know, I've had my uh, singles gotten up onto the iTunes top 100 in the charts uh, for the European market, <laughs> which is exciting. Um, but I don't think I've won like a, you know, specific award, unfortunately. Nope. Well, it's always the first time. You never know. That's right. When least expect it, maybe it will win an award and something. Okay. But uh, for your smile and your persistence and your talents, I'm, I, I would give you an award. I mean, well, thank you. <laughs> No, I think that's great. No, it's fantastic. You, like I say, you really love what you're doing. I can see it. I can hear it. I can see it. Uh, yeah. Now I want to give a shout out to Michael Stover. Michael Stover uh, is, you know, is owning his own company, record company, his entertainment company, and everything. He, because of him, I've been able to get quite a few shows. And I really love what he's doing. He has a passion and dedication to to what he's doing, and he truly leaves gold all out to help his uh, his clients. And so. Uh, how did you meet Michael Stover? Um, he was recommended to me by um, a couple of his other clients I know and have played with. Um, Miss Freddie, Freddie Stover. Um, she recommended him and also John Vento here in Pittsburgh. Um, he actually plays with Cheryl Ann Hawk. Um, so just, you know, I guess it's who you know. I know her, and he she plays with him, and he recommended Michael to me. So, you know, word of mouth, I guess. That's great. One person tells another. Before you know right. it, you're you're all playing together, and you're you're having a grand old time, and you're really loving what you're doing. Everybody is. Yeah. Everybody wins out, right? It's a win-win situation. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, it's fantastic. It really is. Something to be proud of. Uh, let me ask you something then, um, Patty. If you had to do anything over again in your life and your career, would you do anything differently? Um, hmm, maybe. I think maybe I would have got gone out a little bit more, maybe tried a few more different things, maybe gone to a few more auditions or open mics or, or um, jam sessions. You know, sometimes life gets busy, <laughs> other things come up, and um, you know, end up missing some opportunities, perhaps. So maybe if I were to do it again, I would be like, well, I'm not going to stay in tonight. I'm going to go out and go to that open jam session or whatever, that blues jam or whatever, see who I meet. I see. So you might have done it differently. <laughs> okay. Do you have any do you have any present projects right now, very important projects that you're really really wrapped up in really doing? Mm-hmm. Well, just released this a single, um, Glass Shatters. So I'm, you know, trying to get the word out about that. Just got the video up on YouTube a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago. I'm excited about that. And then I'm writing another song. Um, started recording another one. Um, and I've got a couple more in the works. And also just trying to um, explore collaborating with a few other people as well. I see. Uh, do you have any Do you have any uh, future uh, dream projects that you haven't done yet that you really love to do? <clears throat> future dream projects. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, there's always more to do. Um, I would like to get another album out at some point. Um, perhaps find someone who I really gel with to collaborate with and, and kind of partner up with and do some shows with. Um, maybe 
maybe another tour, maybe kind of like just a summer, six weeks or something would be fun or opening for, for somebody really cool, maybe doing like a stint with them touring around a little bit or playing some cool festivals in the summer. So, yeah. Some, well, some things Tom Hanks says, life is like a box of chocolates. You never quite know what you're going to get. And hopefully That's it's right. sweet when you do. Yeah. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Forrest Gump. Remember that? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. That's right. Uh, how can people find out more about you, uh, Patty Spadero? Uh, can you tell me the links, your entertainment website, Facebook page, mm -hmm. YouTube channel, Spotify, um, uh, yes, um, I have a, a I website, pattyspadero.com, so P-A-T-T-I-S-P-A-D-A-R-O.com is my website. And then I'm on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, just look up the Patty Spadero Band, or I think it's Patty Spadero Band on Facebook and just Patty Spadero on Instagram, I believe. Um. YouTube, yep. Patty Spadero Band channel on YouTube. I think it's just at Patty Spadero Band. <laughs> um, those are the big ones. So Google yeah, any of those. Do you have, IM, have IMDB.com? Do you have Spotify or Instagram? Or yes. Was? Yeah, Spotify. Patty Spadero Band on Spotify. Um, we're on Apple Music and iTunes. Yeah, just make sure you spell it right. Patty with an I, Spadero right. with two A's. <laughs> so people should take a look at those if they want to find you and they should support you. Support, you know, get, enjoy your music, even go out and, you know, and, and spend some money um, getting purchasing some of your songs, of course. Yeah, absolutely. You can download songs, stream them, share with friends. All that helps. You gotcha. Bandcamp, I'm on Bandcamp too. Fantastic. That's fantastic. <clears throat> All right. Well, uh, anyway, you, uh, I I want to say that uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, it's it's showtime right now with Patty Spadero. So um, I want you to we're going to present the beautiful uh, vocal stylings of Patty Spadero. The first song is called is called Glass Shatters. Have a blazing and amazing time.
Bravo, bravo. Thank you. Last shutters. Yes. That was great. We have one more. We do have one more a song. If you're delayed, you're going to love this song. You're going to have a real treat, ladies and gentlemen. It's called Bring Me Back. Let's have a blazing hot fun time. When you're not around You've got that key That unlocks my doors Open me up, baby Reach down to my core Feeling far away Picking up the phone Sound of your voice Rounds me Oh, bring me home Bring me back, bring me back Bravo, Patty. All right, thanks. I love the way that ended. Yes. I lose myself when you're not around. What a beautiful way ending. And it's so beautiful. It's so vibrant. And you're back, all right. Bringing me back. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. I have one I have one more question I wanted to ask you. What is your favorite um, part of the entertainment business? Is it recording songs in the in recording in studio, or is it writing songs, or is it in-person entertainment you know performances live performances in front of a crowd yeah so why um 
probably the most fun is playing live in front of a crowd, especially if it's a good night, good show. <laughs> um, I think that's probably, you know, the funnest bit of it. <laughs> um, recording is a lot of fun too, but it's kind of a longer, more, you know, longer process where, oh, you might have to go back and change things and fix things and try it again. And, and it's, you know, add this part and add that part and eventually come up with something that you're really happy with. It's just a longer process. Whereas playing live, it's like right there, right here and now, giving it our best. Yeah, it might make us a mistake here or there, but that's okay. Just having fun and really going for it. I think that's my, probably my favorite part. So you get you get instant gratification from pleasing the crowd. You, you enjoy their reactions to your performing, right? Yeah, yeah, and definitely. And although you like songwriting too, you, I'm sure you, you find in person performances more gratifying. Yet, yeah, I think so. Okay, great. All right. Well, I want to I want to thank you uh, very much, uh, Patty, Patty Spadero, for you know being such a great, entertaining, and fun, and inspirational uh, guest. I've really enjoyed having you on the amazing, original Johnny Blaze Show. The Thomas All right. Well, right. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. Well, you're certainly welcome. Uh, anyway, always, and you know, I must say, you have had a, and continue to have a great life. Keep on blazing forward in entertainment and everything else that you do, blazing those trails. And as we wrap up the show, get ready to close and wrap up the show, I want to say to all, I always say to all my fans and friends, always keep a smile on your face and a song in your heart. And until next time, happy trails and blaze out. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to be a guest on an entertainment talk show, Please send us an email at amazing original JB show at gmail.com. All of our episodes will appear on YouTube and Facebook and receive over 3,000 views. Don't forget to sign up for our YouTube channel, and we, every guest will receive a complimentary DVD of their appearance on the show. Remember, we are much better than a podcast. And now, the amazing original Johnny Blaze has just left the building. Good night. God bless.